Hi, I'm Mary Mammoliti. Today, we're cooking a dish that sounds luxurious, but is actually super easy to prepare and serve. Beef Wellington. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan. The smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking and of course, taste it, even if I can't see it very well. To me, cooking should be fun. That's why I've invited chefs from across Canada who feel the same way I do to cook with me, virtually. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Joining me in Alberta is Chef Lindsay Porter. She's the chef consultant of the Common in Edmonton and has just opened her own restaurant, Colina To Go. Hi, Lindsay. I'm so excited to be cooking with you today. Hi, Mary. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited as well. Okay, so we're making beef wellington. Yes. And I'm going to run through the ingredients quickly. All right. Four to six ounce of beef tenderloin, salt and pepper to taste, four tablespoons of canola oil, two tablespoons of butter, half cup minced onion, four cups of mushrooms minced, four garlic cloves minced, and two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. So where do we begin? Okay, so to start off with, uh, we are going to sear our beef tenderloin. I've chosen to use a really hot cast iron pan. The reason being cast iron, it's a lot thicker and it holds the heat a lot more evenly than let's say a thin aluminum pan. So I'm gonna just crank this pan up on high. I'll do the same on my end. You're gonna wanna heat up your cast iron, piping hot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my beef tenderloin and I'm going to just season with a little bit of salt. And you can use kosher salt, you can use a little bit of sea salt. And how generous, I guess we're being a little generous here because they're thicker cut. Yeah, I tend to go on the heavier side with my seasoning, it depends what you like. And I'm going to leave the pepper at this stage because I like to season that once I flip the steak over. Okay, well I've peppered my, both of mine, so I've got two beef tenderloins in front of me and I've peppered both of them, salted both of them. That's fine, we're on, we'll be on the same page. <laughs> and once the pan just starts to smoke, you're gonna grab your canola oil. So I just put my hand a couple of inches above the pan to feel the heat. If I can keep it there, then it's not hot enough. If I have to take it away after about five seconds, then it's ready to go. Okay, yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Okay, mine is good to go. Okay, so you're gonna drop four tablespoons approximately of your canola oil. And the reason being so much oil in here is it actually gives a much better sear and starts to even cook the edges a little bit better. Oh, I'm already liking that. So here, I'm just gonna drop my beef tenderloins into the hot cast iron pan. Okay. Try to fight the urge to move the tenderloin. It will naturally unstick from the pan once it gets up to the right temperature. We heated this up on high heat to get our pan nice and hot. Are you lowering your temp now? Yeah, lower it to about just above medium. How long would you say they're, we're gonna keep them on one side? At this heat in these pans, approximately two minutes. Mm -hmm. So we've actually been in for close to about a minute and a half now. And I would just take them and flip them over. If you're grabbing beef or any meat, I always tend to grab away from me and then I flip it away from me so that the oil doesn't splash back. So here we're just going to, same process, about two minutes on each side. You don't want to overcook and you don't want to have it become like a medium rare in the pan. You just want a quick sear, give it a bit of flavor. So the tenderloin looks pretty crispy, pretty, pretty brown. So I'm going to grab just a little, you can put this on a pie plate, plate. you can put this on just a regular plate, anything that is good in the freezer. So I've got myself just a little plate that I'm gonna pop them onto. Perfect. This, popping it in the freezer, cooling it down immediately, this is if you want to make it right away within like upcoming hour. Okay, so we're popping this into the freezer now, right? Yes, pop it into the freezer and that just ensures that it starts to solidify on the outside because it's still going to be cool on the inside. Okay, and I'm gonna pop mine now into the freezer. Perfect. So next up, we're gonna start with our Dexel, which coincidentally enough, I just learned was created by a French chef and named after his employer. So fun fact for you. <laughs> <laughs> So in the same pan, keep all your oil, your little brown bits from your seared tenderloin. It's all flavor. So I'm gonna turn this to about a medium heat. So you don't need it quite as hot as you had with the tenderloin. We're gonna be cooking mushrooms down for a little bit. So you don't want the 
put them in a pan and burn them right away. You just want to saute them. So in this bowl, I have minced portobellas. I have a little bit of morels. I have some chanterelles. You can really do any kind of mushroom you like. So you want to just put all your mushrooms into your pan. You're gonna hear a sizzle, but it's not going to be quite as loud and it's not gonna be quite as vigorous as the, as the beef was. I want this on medium heat and I want to cook this down. You don't want to have a lot of liquid in your beef wellington. You kind of want to get a drier cooked mushroom pate so that it's more spreadable. And then when you bake it, you're not gonna have a lot of juices leak out. And then you can add your garlic and your onion. So I have these from my garden. These are just really young spring onions. You can use white onion, you can use green onion, you can use red onion. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of whatever your preference is. So these are just little baby red onions. So I'm just gonna just dice these up slightly and they just need to be just minced. I'm gonna just add these in and then I also have some garlic cloves here. Now, I put on the menu chopped or diced or minced garlic. You can use whatever technique you like. Mm -hmm. I find that when you use a garlic press, you get like half of the garlic is still stuck in the holes and it's just, yeah. No, I'm with you. Get every little bit of that. <laughs> oh, and I'm getting that, that garlic now, that toasted garlic scent. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it smells, it smells amazing already. Mm -hmm. It's starting to feel a little bit more on the dry side when I move it around. So at this stage, we are good to actually add our butter. There it is, our butter. How much butter are we adding in? All right, for our butter, we're gonna add about two tablespoons. So the butter just kind of adds a little bit more richness. Mm -hmm. The dairy from the butter will just start to brown a little bit and that'll just give it a little bit of a nutty flavor. And you'll actually be able to smell that pretty soon here. And from here, I'm gonna add my salt. And I would maybe for this amount, go about a teaspoon or two, but really it's your preference. I suggest you taste your food as you go. Well, this is, that'll explain why the chef is never really hungry once they've cooked the meal. <laughs> it's because you're tasting all the way through. Exactly, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll be cooking for my family, I'll be cooking at the restaurant and you know, it's time to sit down, have some dinner and it's just like, no thanks, I'm good. I've just been snacking on buttery duck cell all day. <laughs> been grazing all day. So this is looking really good and don't worry if it is a little on the greasy side. What we're going to actually do is add two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. And the reason for this, it does soak up a little bit of the oil, the butter, and it binds it together a little bit. So here I'm going to add two tablespoons of breadcrumb. Now, do you need to remove this from the heat or we just go through on the heat still and just keep on adding? This I would, yeah, you know what? You can probably, yeah, you can take it off the heat. It's, um, the mushrooms are done, the bread's gonna soak in, and it won't sizzle as much because all the fat's being absorbed by the bread. Mm, if I can just, it smells so good in here already. Mm. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> so we're going to actually take this duck cell and either put it in a bowl or a flatter sheet. We just want to cool this down as well. So I just went in for a plate, and now I'm just gonna scrape mine out of the pan, onto the plate, and just, we're gonna, with the back of the spoon, just spread it out? Yeah, yeah, just try and get it as flat as you can. And you can put this on a little mini bake sheet. You can put this on whatever you like, as long as it's kind of flattened out. And that just, when it's flat, obviously it'll just cool down a lot quicker. Okay. Okay, so we can pop this in either into the fridge or the freezer. The freezer will cool it down, obviously, a little bit quicker. Okay, so we're popping this into the freezer now, right? Yes. Okay. We're gonna let our meat and our duck cell cool. So let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we are gonna get to know more about Chef Lindsay. You're watching Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. Welcome back. Our beef Wellington ingredients are still cooling, so before we put it all together and into the oven, let's dish a little bit with Chef Lindsay. Lindsay, tell us where your passion for cooking comes from. Oh, my passion for cooking, it comes from Honestly, my parents, um, I always cooked with my mom and I mean, she was just like a really good home cook uh, and 
right out of high school, actually, my dad really encouraged me to uh, check out the culinary course, and I just thought it was the most amazing program you could ever. To me, it wouldn't even have been school. It was just like you can just come here and eat and learn how to cook. So it was really my dad who kind of encouraged me uh, to get into the course and start cooking. He's uh, he's from England, and he moved here long before I was born. But um, pre-pandemic, I did have an English style restaurant and I was dedicated to to him just because he was kind of the the one who pushed me towards cooking. You spent some time traveling Europe. How did that shape your cooking style? Yeah, so Right after I got out of culinary school, my sister and I just started to, we traveled around and it really opens up your eyes to just the different cuisines and just the different lifestyle and the way people really cherish food over in, in certain countries and just the things they serve at different times, the, the, the fresh food, the fresh ingredients. It, it was really eye-opening actually and just kind of come back really inspired and yeah, I just I learned a lot. You're a chef consultant at the Common Restaurant in Edmonton. So what's that like? What is that? Yeah, I last year sold the, or sold the restaurant that I had previously owned and took a couple months off and just decided when I wanted to get back into it, I wanted to do a little bit more menu design, kind of be a little bit more on the creative side. And it, uh, it's been really exciting to change things up and do new dishes. And yeah, it's just, it's a great spot, really busy location. So keeps keeps everyone busy. <laughs> and speaking of busy, you're pretty busy because you also have your own restaurant. Yeah, we're a little cafe. It's a um, takeout. It's called Kalina to go at the Mutart, and we make everything in house. Uh, we do sandwich soup, sandwiches, of course. Make vegan salads. Um, it's, it's takeout, but like a big step up from your regular cafe. That's for sure. <laughs> so an issue you speak about um, is equality in the kitchen. Why is this so important to you? It's important to me because I know when I had started off cooking, I got out of school, I was just 20 years old, and I started working in a couple restaurants, and I found it, I found it very, very difficult. It was, it was a big adjustment, just attitude-wise, and it's a very stressful environment, um, let alone, like, having, having people scream at you and almost bully you, so I, I don't like working like that. I, I like to make people feel comfortable, I like to, I like to have longevity in my staff. Um, me as a chef now, I have a bit, I have more control. So if I want to make girls feel comfortable, men feel comfortable, boys feel comfortable, whoever I hire, as long as you're working hard, you do a great job, you show up, and you have a good attitude. Like who doesn't, who doesn't want to come to a job like that? And I understand you taught a lesson at the CNIB. Tell me a little more about that. Yes, that was actually that was quite a few years ago, and honestly, that it stuck with me because. I actually never had an opportunity to to work with anyone visually impaired before, and what you can do with limited sight. Like these people, they're still cooking amazing dishes and chop. What like you had someone who was like completely blind to just kind of slightly impaired, and it was I was so impressed. I, I couldn't. I left that that cooking class just almost almost wanting to step up my own skills. I was just like, geez, like some of them could chop better than me at the time. So <laughs> it, um, no, it was, it was really ins like inspirational. It's a real eye opener. I mean, no pun intended for people like me, I'm low vision and cooking with my senses is just second nature to me. But when you're cooking and you're using those senses, it just makes the dish so much more tastier and better. I, I, I don't know, it's almost like that heightened kind of sense of taste because you're really owning in on that one thing that you're looking for within a dish. So you get to taste all the flavors. Vision, like looking at a dish, the visual will only get you so far. It needs to, it needs to be roasted properly, it needs to be seasoned properly, it needs to flavor and almost, the visuals are almost I don't even want to say second, they're almost like third or fourth um, when it actually when you're cooking it. I kind of like to say that the low vision blind chef is the MacGyver of the kitchen because we pretty much find a way to do everything we need to do in the kitchen. It may, it may look a little differently to you and to everyone else, but to us, it works and it gets the job done just the same. Yeah, and it, you, you could probably come up with a million ideas that I would, I just wouldn't occur to me and mm -hmm. come up with just as good, if not better product. So yeah, it, uh, it it's really impressive. <laughs>
I am so anxious to get our beef wellington into the oven so we can dig into it. But first, we need to put it all together. It's all coming up after this short break. Stay tuned for more Dish with Mary. Welcome back to Dish with Mary. We're back with Chef Lindsay Porter and we're getting ready to wrap our beef in our duck salad. We've added some ingredients in front of us. One sheet of puff pastry cut into quarters, one cup of flour, three tablespoons of truffle oil, the leaves of five thyme sprigs, two tablespoons minced parsley, and three egg yolks and whites separated. And out of the freezer, we've taken our beef and our duck salad. Let's do this. Yes, all right, so here we go. I have pre-floured my cutting board. And the reason for this, obviously we're gonna roll out our puff pastry and I don't want it to stick with the two pieces of puff pastry. Okay. So I'm gonna generously flour the top of my puff pastry. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna just dust my hands off a bit. Then I'm gonna grab my rolling pin. I'm gonna just slowly start to roll it out. And take your time when rolling it. I always find if you're, if you're moving too fast, you can tend to, to rip. So let's say we get a little hole. We maybe rolled it out too thin. I don't know, maybe I did or didn't do that. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> it was too thin. And how do we repair it? Can we repair it or is it just you gotta start over? No, no, absolutely not. So you get a hole, all you gotta do, just. Make sure it's floured so nothing gets too sticky, but give it a little pinch, seal it up. Ultimately, we're gonna make little parcels anyways, so it's uh, not the end of the world by any means. Okay, so it's pretty forgiving. It is, it is. I mean, you don't want holes in it, but it's still gonna taste delicious if there is. So, but you know what, don't sweat it. So here I've rolled my puff pastry. It's almost actually ends up being close to double the size that it was. You want kind of like a thin, flaky, buttery crust, and that's what rolling it out thinner will do. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take our egg white, an egg wash with your pastry brush, the top that we're gonna fill. So we're brushing the egg white over top the puff pastry. Yes, and the reason being, egg whites are fair, like, they're quite sticky, and so it just kind of gives you that little extra safety to keep everything kind of stuck and glued together. Okay, next, we've got our egg whites on. Perfect, okay, so we're gonna add our three tablespoons of truffle oil, our thyme sprigs, and our parsley into your duck cell. So I'm gonna just sprinkle the fresh herbs and my truffle oil. And this is where you're putting your truffle oil, you're drizzling this right over top? Yeah, yeah, it really enhances the flavor of mushrooms. Obviously, it's a mushroom itself. And then just give it a quick, you just wanna kinda just give it a quick little stir just to incorporate. Okay. We're gonna take just about under a tablespoon of uh, the duck cell and we're gonna put it right in the middle of our puff pastry sheets. We're just gonna spread it out slightly. We wanna make sure it's enough, but it's kept in the middle. Okay, so I'm just using the back of my spoon to spread this out. Yeah, perfect, yep. Next up, we are going to take our chilled beef tenderloin and we're gonna place that right in the middle of the duck cell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that looks great actually. So if you wanna take your top left corner and just fold it over and then take your right bottom corner and you're gonna fold that over and then you're gonna take either side, your left or your right, and you're gonna fold that over and then you're gonna fold that again. And then you have just a little parcel with everything crossed over. Mm-hmm. Okay, then once that's done, take them and then we're gonna just like carefully flip them over. Mm-hmm. And then basically I kind of cut my hands and then I start to just kind of spin and just press the Wellington just slightly. Yeah, so little parcels. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to take our bake sheet with our parchment on it. And if you want as well, you can take a little spatula, an offset spatula and lift them. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a spatula to help lift mine off the cutting board. Perfect, yeah. Okay, so next step, we have our egg yolks. And the reason I would choose to use egg yolks on the outside is they tend to give a little bit of a nicer color and a little bit more sheen and shine when you bake them. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my pastry brush, dip it into the egg yolk, and I'm gonna brush it over top the puff pastry. Exactly, so I've just started here. We're going to egg wash the top, and then also try and get the sides as well. Just kind of everywhere down to the bottom where the parchment and the tray are. Mm-hmm. Yep, perfect. Oven is at 325, and that's just to kind of get every everything going. Um, so the internal temperature should be about 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 130. That'll give you about a medium rare to medium. Okay, I'm gonna pop mine in. I've already preheated my oven. Perfect. And then, through the magic of TV, I've got some made. Well, look at that. I do as well. Who'd have thought? Yeah. <laughs> I've just made a quick little salad just to demonstrate like, what you can serve it with. It's a pretty big meal in itself. I mean, it's got all the carbs, it's got the beef, it's got your, your mushrooms in there, so. It's got what dreams are made of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's simple, but it's delicious. We've got our, uh, our Wellington. Oh, delicious. I'm ready to taste, are you? No, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Mmm, this is so good. Mm. Delicious. I mean, yeah, you taste the like the fresh herbs, the truffles. The truffle is just a subtle, it's like a hint of truffle, which I love. I know. You don't want it, you don't want it to be overpowering. And I find when you have the truffle oil just enough with the mushrooms really enhances the flavor of them. Mm-hmm. This is absolutely delicious. Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing this recipe with us, for cooking with me today. I had a blast. Thank you. Thanks so much, I had so much fun. I haven't made a Wellington in a while and I'm glad I could uh, share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> For today's full recipe, visit our website at ami.ca forward slash dish. Host, Mary Mamaliti. Guest chef, Lindsay Porter. Executive producer, Michelle Dudas. Producer, Lance Corbett. Directors of photography, Brian Roy. Kelly Wolfert. Camera assistants, Gavin Lee, Braden Rook. Sound recordists, Phil Dransfeld. Mike Monson. Editor and technical producer, Patrick Kelly. Editor and production assistant, Miriam Bakhtiar. Graphics, Mike Smith. Media accessibility specialist, Simone Cupid. Audio post, Mike Monson. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.